So the, the modern state, you know, the, let's say the state is a product of modernity. It yeah. assumes modernity and we'll talk about that and what that is in a second and it also assumes progress and we're going to unpack that in a second okay because progress has to do with certain beliefs metaphysical beliefs about time metaphysical beliefs about space and value right what is good what's not good mm -hmm. um and so you know halak points to three sort of things to kind of because somebody could say and this is always sort of like a, a knee-jerk comment that we that we get in the the comment section of these sorts of things everything's always been the same the pre-modern period is the same as the modern period. There's no real difference. There's always been war. There's always been uh, corruption. There's always been this. These are sort of, um, again, trans-historical and universal forces. Um, Halak points to three things and says, not so fast. There is there is a difference. There is a, actually a, quite a significant difference because whereas the doctrine of moder modernity and progress, um, they justify themselves as having triumphed over pre-modernity in three key ways. One of them through poverty and disease. Right. So the argument is that, well, we've got it so much better now. Back in the Middle Ages, you know, you were wiped out by the plague and you had you just lived in poverty and, you know, these sorts of things. The second is freedom and specifically individual freedom. OK, back then you didn't have the freedom to wear what you wanted to wear, or to do what you wanted to do. Now we have freedom. And then finally, wealth and standard of living. OK, so we are richer than we've ever been. And so this is a supposedly a self-evident sort of, um, you know, a piece of empirical evidence for why uh, the, the state is a positive force. And we've gotten so far and modernity is doing great and progress is excellent. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, Halak pulls us back and he says, well, wait a second, let's let's look at all of these, you know, individually. He says, poverty, disease, and famine, yes, it was true that it existed in the pre-modern sphere, but before modernity, before the state, this was something that was natural, right? It was something that the, the disease came naturally, the, the famine came naturally, the poverty came naturally. Whereas in the modern era, one of the hallmarks of the modern era is that these things are man-made. You have man-made diseases, you have man-made poverty, you have greed, right? And this type of inequality that we see in the world, um, absolutely staggering inequality that's getting worse and worse by the second is something that is of a particular modern flavor. Um, if we're going to point to the freedom and in individuality, you know, Halak points back, he says, well, we have this fractured social structure, the, the fractured family, the destruction of community, right? This has been the price to pay. Um, and then finally, uh, if the modern era is superior because of wealth and standard of living, he says, again, what's the cost? The cost has been the absolute destruction and distinct and extinction of the natural world. Right. So, um, you know, Halak pushes back. He says, okay, yes, it is very, very different. The, first of all, for those of you who are going to say that everything's always just been the same, it's just, you know, different actors appearing and disappearing from stage. No, pre-modernity is categorically different from modernity. Modernity is a thing and it's a particular thing. Modernity sees itself as being superior to what came before it. And we'll talk more about that it looks like we're running out of time, so perhaps next video. Um, whereas Halak is pushing back against that and saying, no, 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 it's not It's not that simple. Is that modernity has uh, crises and has particular problems that are rooted in its entire episteme, that are rooted in the, the DNA of the thing, okay? Mm -hmm. The very, very structure of modernity and the state and the sort of idea about what it is that we're doing here. Um, it's not incidental. It's not that we just need more modernity or that technology is going to save us. Or once we invent the right vaccine or we invent the right, uh, we're able to grow food uh, on Mars or whatever it is, then we'll be saved. <laughs> that's that's missing the entire point. The entire point that Halak is trying to point out is that these crises that we've gotten into in the first place uh, are exactly because of the modern episteme, the modern separation between uh, morality and the state. And the state is the largest sort of player in this. If we're looking for what's the relationship between modernity and the state, uh, modernity, we could say, is the sort of, uh, is the episteme, is all these sort of metaphysical sort of relationships or assumptions. And the state is the largest player in mm -hmm. enforcing these assumptions and these metaphysics and these values.